Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition where everything's on fire. Oh jeez, look at that. The fire, the PNG fire <laughs> effects. Um, they've actually made the um, sound effects better. I did, oh my goodness gracious, I did turn the sound down a bit. I hope it doesn't mess with you guys too much. Um, but it was really loud for me, especially because I am being so quiet and I am trying to maintain being quiet, which means that everything's really loud in my ears. I start talking louder, thinking, you know, that I'm trying to talk over it. Um, and yeah, anyway. Oh, I knew it. Ah, jeez, this is the worst mission. <laughs> worst mission. Ah, jeez, look what you've done, look what you've done. He just walks away. Oh, jeez, like a puzzle. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. oh, look at all these, look at all these people you burned to death. Saeed doesn't care. Who's saying that? Oh, hello. Oh, jeez. The doors won't open until the fire's out. Oh my gosh. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm stressed. Stressed. I'm trying. Oh, jeez. Oh, that scared me. Don't die in there. I've seen too many people die behind glass. <laughs> behind glass walls. Oh, cover. Cover? No? Okay. I see you. Gotta keep your head on a swivel. I'll take it. Ooh, I will take that. Uh. See, was that so hard? Oh, uh, have a good time. You would think the fire activation system would have activated when the fire started, but, you know, apparently not. It's run down, you know, very corporate, futuristic sci-fi company type stuff. Cheapo materials, because it's cheaper to replace human lives than parts, I guess. Ooh. This might be useful. Me? For me? A flamethrower? Oh my gosh, I have a flamethrower. But, um, hang on, hold on, hold on, hold your horses. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, very nice. Where? Oh, down there? Oh. Okay. I'll play with the flamethrower for a bit. I'll probably regret it. First person to bring me Masani's head to get something special See? in their face. He's still here. <laughs> Owie. Good thing I did my recharge. Oh jeez. Really? You, no, you just, you, just, you just failed the first time, guy. This man's a coward. He's an absolute coward. It took six people to hold Zaid down the first time. Come on. Oh, my. Oh, jeez. A coward? Oh, I can't see anything. Oh, did I get him? 
More cops, what? Oh, a robot? Oh, I can't, I do, can't do cover there, that's cool. I didn't even get near it. Oh jeez, wait, oh jeez. I did see that. I thought there was only... Oh, okay. Oh jeez. Zaid, you shouldn't have. Embrace the sea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, Thane's posted up in the sniper spot. Hang on. I can get the, the thing. Oh, man. Never mind. Well, I'll break it. Behind us, I guess. Did I just... I think I just killed Thane. I think I just killed Thane. <laughs> I'm sorry. Where was he? Where was he? I, I thought he got out of there. Mm, my bad. Oh, jeez. Oh, we get down. Oh, jeez. Let me die to that. <laughs> now what? Are we good? I'm so sorry, Thane. We are getting so much money. I thought I waited till the thing moved away from him, but nope. I'm just a psychotic murderer, apparently. They just appeared out of- they were just waiting in here. They are just waiting. Oh. Well, let me see what's in here. Nothing? Okay. I didn't realize, once again, that there's a bridge uh, across the way. So, that's nice. Have a rocket launcher. This time, Saeed, you son of a bitch. See you in another twenty years. I mean, I have a rocket launcher. We can go get him. just cost me 20 years of my life oh no i think i i think we did okay ah, son of a bitch. Oh. you started this fire zayn wait that's not what i meant I sense that you'll burn in it yeah screw you that's actually not what come I, on get yeah. me out of this shit hole but i didn't mean to do that <laughs> you put your revenge ahead of the mission how can I trust that you'll be there when we need you? I'll do what I was goddamn paid to do, Shepard. Just don't expect any more than that. Now stop screwing around. Let's go. You put your own goals ahead of the mission. It's not the way this works. I've survived this long watching my own back. No time to worry about anyone else. I did it. You're part of a team now, Zaid. There's no way we can do this unless we're all working together. Tough you, love. 
You have a point. He would say I'm anything. I'm not done with Vito, but I can put that behind me long enough to get your mission done. Well, it worked out. Let's get the hell out of here. I was going to start over because I actually did try to put the Paragon option, or the upper option, and it didn't work. <laughs> I feel like we blew them up, though. Like, I think they crashed. And they blew up. We could just go look. But I, you may not, I may not have known actually, um, that I got his <laughs> loyalty, but, uh, I got the pop-up, so. <laughs> this is cool. Inferno grenade? Very nice. Company have to spend millions to rebuild. Oh, that's what it was. That's why the Blue Suns took over the refinery. And so the refinery, like, corporation was trying to pay to get them released. It's accepted my command. Do outfit for Zayn. I really didn't want to say, you deserve this. I just wanted to say, you know, I wanted to say the whatever was above, like, are you hurt? <laughs> but it's fine. Commander, you received a new message at your private terminal. It does change, like, the tone of the encounter, but it's fine. From Oriana, yeah. I hope this is the right Commander Shepard. I'm Oriana. My sister only told me a little, but I don't think it occurred to her that I'm as smart as she is. I mean, it did, but I poked around a little and found an information broker who got me this address. It's probably Liara, so you're lucky. I got to thank her, but I never got to thank you. My parents don't really understand it, but I know how much Miranda did, how many little things over the years were her looking out for me. I'm not going to tell them. I still want to go to school and get some degrees, but I wanted you to know that I know you saved me. I had a guardian angel all these years. I don't know if my sister has anybody. She said that she's working for you, and it was pretty clear that you were doing something dangerous. Make sure she comes back alive, okay? P.S. Tell don't tell her I said this. I would just it would just make her angry. P.P.S. Miranda, quit looking at Shepard's message. All don't act like you don't. It's what I do. <laughs> Stop reading my mail. Oh wait, let's see. I'm surprised by Thane's spiritual side. Oh yeah. His psych profile mentioned little of it. And he carries himself with such cold confidence. It's very I'm not integral. Sure if I find him scary or sexy. Mm, yeah, both. A lot of women like bad boys. A lot of women like you. Mm-hmm. I live a dangerous life. Dangerous men fit right in. I like you more and more each day, Shepard. Mm -hmm. Anyway, how may I help you, Commander? Is there anything I should know? Garrus received some news that <gasps> Maybe you should speak with him down in the main battery. We should do that. Anything else, Commander? That'll be all. Take care. That'll be that'll be good. I don't think Joker has anything to say after this. After the. I've got an appointment with Shahira in three months. Oh, up here. I can't wait. We're flying into the eye of the storm, and you're thinking about some Asari prostitute? Hey, watch it. It's not like that at all. She's so. She's. You won't understand unless you meet her. Yeah, well, you've never met her. <laughs> I've maybe seen her. Commander, I assume everything's going well up here. Good for now. Oh, Fractured that's right. I'm on the mute, but I think I made my point. That's right. That's the. That's it for now. See you, Commander. The final thing we hear from them for a while. So I should definitely go talk to Zaid and then Garrus, because Garrus's mission is really good. Gall, no, I need to get... What am I thinking? I need to get Tally. <laughs> what am I doing? I need to get Tally before I help Garrus. Back for another lesson. Don't punch me in the face, please. Hell of a mission down there on Zoria. Can't believe Vito got away. 20 years of tracking, gone. Just like that. Don't yell at me. He didn't... Oh, I gotta let that go. We have more important things to do. Well, and also, like, I could have sworn he didn't know Vito was on that one. I thought it was just a job he got. Nice ship you got here. Rumi. Last ship I worked on, two men couldn't walk past each other in the hall unless they were really good friends. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I should let you go. He's angry. No more later, I actually don't know if he's angry or not, but what am I freaking doing before we do freaking anything? Okay, first we'll go talk to Garrus. But then we gotta go start getting tally. Holy cow, I am a monster. I can't I'm legitimately upset with myself. She's usually one of the first people I get, but my Thane Samara bias came out. And then I was like, oh geez, I have all these loyalty missions. Shepard, I'm glad you came by. I've got something. I may need your help. You remember Sidonis, the one who betrayed my team? I found a lead on him. There's a specialist on the Citadel, names Fade. Mm. He's an expert at helping people disappear. Sidonis was seen with him. What happened? How did Sidonis betray your team? He tipped off the mercs, told them where our base was. He drew me out with a false job, then let the mercs hit my team. My men weren't prepared. They tried to hold them off. By the time I got back, there were only two survivors. They didn't last long. All ten of them dead. Because of him. What are you planning to do when you find him? You humans have a saying. An eye for an eye, a life for a life. No, Garrus, not this he path. He owes me ten lives, and I plan to collect. You sure that's how you want to play it? I'm sure. I don't need you to agree with me, but I'd like your help. Where do we find Fade? I've arranged a meeting. We'll meet him in a warehouse near the Neon Markets down on Zakara Ward. Thanks, Shepard. I appreciate you taking the time to help me. Did you definitely lied to Fade. There's no way Fade would actually let you talk to him. You're the kind of guy that wants to find someone and Fade makes people disappear. Let's see. Do we have anything new we can talk about? Do you need something? Have a few minutes to talk? If you wish. Yes! The last time we talked, you started speaking about a past event as if you were watching it. Drell have perfect memories. We can relive any moment in our lives with perfect clarity. It's difficult to control at times. Some of us disappear into, you know, let's call it solipsism. Mm. What do you mean, solipsism? When a memory feels as real as life, it's as valid as life. Thinking about a moment brings back the smell of cut grass, the warmth of another's hand on yours, the taste of another's tongue in your mouth. Wouldn't you rather lose yourself in such a memory than spend the night alone? Staring at walls and metal and plastic. Mm. Isn't there a risk that you could lose yourself in bad memories as well? Of course. Remembering the times I've taken bullets is unpleasant. But I can look at my knee and see it's not shattered. The memories that are hard to escape are those of despair. I'm not going to do that because it's rude. Mm. You can remember everything that happened in your life? Nearly. I expect if we remember the birth trauma, we'd never recover from it. <laughs> you can relive every assassination you've ever made? In perfect detail. Every mistake I made. Every target's last breath. That sounds difficult. At any moment, you could relive the guilt. Guilt? No. I've never felt any particular guilt about my contracts. My employers killed them. My body was only the tool they used. If you kill a man with your gun, do you hold the gun responsible? My gun can't decide right from wrong. You clearly do. My soul does. But my body is merely flesh. Flesh whose reflexes were honed to kill. Drell minds are different from humans. We see our body as a vessel, and accept that it is not always under our control. Hmm. We just, we just have to get over this awkward conversation. So you don't assume any responsibility for the things you do? Not every action performed by my body is a result of conscious choices. I take responsibility for those that are. Humans often believe in a soul distinct from the body. A spirit responsible for moral reasoning that lives on after the body's death. Our belief is just a bit more literal. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, just a, it's just an extension, essentially. The last time we talked, you remembered one of your assassinations. Something about sunset colored eyes? Ah, uh, that time. Uh, laser dot trembles on the skull. A spice on the spring wind. Sunset eyes defiant in the scope. A bystander noticed my spotting laser and threw herself between me and the target. 
She couldn't see me, but she stared me down. It was odd that you just blurted that out. Just another vivid drill memory? Not... no. She was a vivid person. <laughs> it hurts me. <laughs> like, not that... obviously. This was somebody important to him. So it's not like, oh, I'm jealous. It's him being upset. Like, you see, like, the attachment and, like, how upset he is. And it's painful to see. You know what I mean? As it's weird. Like, I don't know. No, it's not weird. It's just like, you know, it's like, I sh maybe it's like, oh, no, you're all tied up and being like, no, you can't. I don't know. That's so immature. People have lives before they meet one another. You know what I mean? So, like, somebody's lost somebody that was very important to them they can still be important to you and you can still be important to them but you can still grieve when they grieve you know what I mean did you take the shot not that day <laughs> I want to keep talking I think yeah talk. a bystander noticed my spotting laser and threw herself between me I should get time. back to my duties Shepard I appreciate these chats we have. What? Okay, is this... Okay, I'm definitely, I'm definitely doing the Paragon stuff. I appreciate these chats, too. <laughs> You've spent a lot of your life alone, Thane. <laughs> Work fulfilled me. Reading. I barely spoke to anyone outside my family. It seems there will be no one to mourn me when I die. You're the only friend I've made in ten years. Just a friend, no! <laughs> okay. Friend, huh? It's a start. A start? That's intriguing. <laughs> I will always be here to talk. Oh my I do it's a little brazen not brazen. It's a little brazen how forward Shepard can be. It can feel a little awkward, especially when you're talking to Thane, because he's obviously talking about like a loved one. And then you're like, yo, y yo, <laughs> it's a little, later on there's a conversation that happens where it's just like, it's really over the top and you're like, oh my gosh, Shepard, slow down. <laughs> he is talking about some like ingrained, like, what is it, like uh, grief. And then she's like, yo, I love you or something, you know, not, not that quite that brazen, but yeah. Anyway, yes. And I like that he's like, because when, when you try to romance Garrus, he's like, oh, and he gets a little flustered and that's fine. It's cute. It's whatever. But Thane is like, oh, because he's like a dangerous man and Shepard's a dangerous woman. And like, in some ways, I've always kind of headcanoned it where like, she's like, oh, you're lonely, Thane. And she has that frown. Um, but it's not just for him, I think. It's in some ways for her, like, especially after coming back from, like, being dead, essentially. And, like, I think she feels kind of alienated from people. That even the people that she knew, because life moved on without her. And the game never really goes into, like, a lot of depth of, like, the, like, mental, like, emotional, like, recovery. Maybe even trauma. Not trauma, necessarily, but, like the mental recovery essentially that Shepard would have to go through of like she was dead that's something to come to terms with she was brought back to life like holy cow and like she's been gone two years and so what just happened and people have changed and like that's gotta be kind of weird like you know even more than weird like that's kind of like that's gotta keep you up at night you know and like mess with your head the third game actually does a pretty good job at showing like psychological like Shepard's kind of like psychological um not like fears her I guess I don't know how to say it very well um her not like breakdowns but like I can't think of the word right now because I'm a moron and I can't words I can't words anything um but yeah like the issues that one has dealing with all the like stuff that Shepard has to deal with in Mass Effect 3 it kind of you know starts to Starts to take a toll on her, the psychological toll that Mass Effect 3 has on her. Hey, got a minute? Egg, of course. My heart goes out to Miranda and her sister. That's a rough situation. You really dodged a bullet down there. It took us to stand up to Zaid, but I'm glad you did. Thanks. Gabby and Ken would make a great couple. I just doubt they'll ever realize it. I forget. Come back later. I'm sure I'll have more to talk I about. I forget she uh, does. I'll not forget. I just. 
doesn't happen very often that she does do um like little comments on on people and missions Shepard I wanted to check in I am always happy to talk with you. I'm interested in hearing more about Asari Justicars. Come, come, sit by me. Oh, that was scary. That was scary. I love this. I we love that we just have a seat. In Asari culture. Justicars are from another era. Look at our sitting. Young Asari grow up watching vids about our adventures. Pure fiction, of course. Some Asari are uncomfortable with us, but so few Justicars exist that most have never met one. There are only a few Justicars? Few Asari wish to make the sacrifices necessary to become one of us, and the training has a high casualty rate. It is a life of constant danger. Throughout the entire galaxy, there are only a handful of us at any time. Why would anyone want to be a Justicar? Hmm. It is a deeply personal matter. Sometimes the most brutal path is the only honest one. It's wild. Like, Samara encompasses these two... Like, look how, look how we're floating, by the way. It's really hard to make meshes, like, interact with other meshes. It, and, like, Samara's, like, her butt's kind of touching the floor. I am absolutely not touching the floor. My feet aren't touching the floor. My butt isn't touching the floor. Like... It's just, it's, I'm just floating. I'm, we're both biotic. Let's put it down to that. Um, anyway, I really like the juxtaposition, kind of like thing with Samara, where like the brutality of like our your their actions is like juxtaposed by like the the like mental calmness and like solemnity of their like outward actions and like inward mentalities. You know, this code of the Justicar seems central to your life. It is 5,000 sutras and covers every situation one can encounter. I have memorized every word. There is only the code. Sometimes justice calls for mercy. It does not exist to bring about spiritual enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Its purpose is to punish the wicked and protect the innocent. It's not like a religion, you know, like sutras are sometimes equated with, you know. It's a way of life. Which technically, if you're going to talk about which sutras and Buddhism are sometimes like you know, in the same realm. Um, Buddhism, at least the way I was taught it, is not technically a religion. It is sometimes used as a religion and classified as a religion now, but originally it was not supposed to be, according to the Buddha himself, was not supposed to be treated as a religion. It was supposed to be a way of life. That was specifically how it was supposed to be categorized. But that's been changed, you know, just over time and how people perceive it and everything and how they choose to, like, interact with it. The Asari I've spoken to seem conflicted about Justicars. In this age, people see shades of gray everywhere. The code of the Justicar is black and white. I might seem a hero to many, but I would kill all of them if I had to. What role do you think Justicars have in Asari society? I would say that the closest human equivalent is a knight errant in your medieval lore. Perhaps mixed with a bit of samurai. <laughs> you know about knights errant and samurai? When I knew I must leave Asari space again, I studied the history and morals of new species. When I was a maiden wandering the galaxy, humans had not yet arrived. Oh man, that's why she's pretty old. What did your studies tell you about us? You are more individualistic than any other species I have encountered. If three humans are in a room, there will be six opinions. Mm. I like your species. Oh boy. I am curious to see what you will do. We do have that. Uh, that she really do sum us up very well. <laughs> Romance in the code. Ho -ho. Does the code forbid romantic involvement? It does not. However, I would never be interested in such. That part of my life is well behind me. You could meet someone who reawakens those desires. I am nearly 1,000 years old. I know myself and my desires. <laughs> and your curiosity is quite welcome. You can't, you can't blame me. You can't blame me. Truly, you can't. I mean, I, I, I'm looking respectfully. <laughs> what does your code say about killing? I am compelled to kill the wicked. If a Justicar is involved, peaceful solutions are long past. 
You make killing sound so casual. I remember each being I have slain. They are always in my thoughts. I should go. I'm glad we spoke. Me too. No, there. It's a like. It'd be really cool to like. I don't know. Get Justicars in later games. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? That would be really cool. That would actually be super duper cool. Anyway, um, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and call the video here, but really quick, I'm gonna say thank you to my patrons, to all of my patrons, but to specifically my Ice Hapling tier patron, Reese Galito. Thank you so much for your support. And to my tree tier patron, Christopher, who is the super bestest. Thank you so much, truly, for all your support and kind words. Um, and once again, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.